hope you're all doing well. Welcome to one of our Q&A panels hosted by the UT Orientation Advisors. Here today, I have a few of the most amazing OAs to give you all perspective and advice on how to be successful in the classroom. So whether that's just study skills or just how to you know, stay on top of your assignments, we're gonna give you all some advice today. Um, so we're gonna go around, introduce ourselves, and then we'll get started. So I'll first introduce myself. My name is Emily Vo. I'm a second year government and international relations and global studies double major. I'm also pursuing a Spanish business certificate as well. Um, I'm from Plano, Texas. It's a little suburb of Dallas and I use she, her pronouns and I'll pass it off to Angela. Hello everyone. My name is Angela. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I'll be a second year BFA dance and social work double major in the fall. And I'm from Austin, Texas, and I'll pass it to Jordan. Hey, Longhorns. My name is Jordan. I am a second year corporate communications major from Klein, Texas, and I use she, her pronouns. I am so hyped to have the opportunity to answer some of the questions that y'all have about academic life at UT, and I will be passing it off to Savannah. Hi, I'm Savannah. I'm a third year human development major. I use she, her pronouns, and I am from Waco, Texas. And I will pass it off to Marcos. Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Marcos. I'm a second year business major, hoping to major in finance and also minor in Italian. My pronouns are he, him, his. And just like Jordan said, I'm here to answer your questions. I'm kind of hyped, so I'm gonna pass it back to the person in charge. Thanks, Marcos. Um, well, Thank you all for introducing yourselves. We're going to get started. So I'm guessing one of the most pressing questions we have, right, is there's so much um, work we have to do as college students. So I was going to ask Angela and myself, how do you stay on top of all your assignments? Yes, the biggest thing that um, I would recommend is just find a way for you to organize all of your stuff. Um, it'll be different for everyone, but the way I organize all of my assignments, um, I use Google Calendar as well as a, like, a physical to-do list um, so I can go off and cross those off. It's really satisfying. Um, the syllabus will have all of the due dates on it. So make sure you look over that and you're really clear on when all of those are. Don't skim over it because that's really important for you to read. Um, as well as don't wait to do your assignments at the last minute. You know, you want to stay on top of things. If you wait at the last minute, it'll be stressful and you don't want to put yourself in that situation. And then on top of all of that, make sure you organize all of your notes and you know where everything is that can be um, handwriting notes like on paper, typing them on a computer, or even writing them on an iPad if you choose to take your notes that way. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree with that. I probably was about to say the exact same thing as Angela. Um, some other tips I would say, I think she already said physical planner, but I know that may seem elementary, middle school, but I, I sit down every night and I just get out my pens and write it down for what I need to accomplish that day. Um, I think something that I've learned is trying to like plan out a whole week can be kind of overwhelming and can cause you to just put it to the side. But when you take it day by day, it seems like you can accomplish your goals um, much more realistically. So that's something that I would say. Um, another thing on staying on top of your assignments is uh, putting away all distractions. So we all probably love our phones. Um, we love checking Snap, TikTok, Instagram, um, but especially when I'm studying and especially when I was uh, online doing online classes, I had to put my phone on do not disturb and like put it away so that I could stay focused. And that helped me really to stay on top of my assignments as well. Um, but yeah, just sending a, a routine and also, um, you know, giving scheduling that break time as well will prevent you from being burnt out. And that will also help you to stay on top of your assignments. Um, but as far as also, I mentioned a little bit earlier, so there's gonna be some hybrid classes, in-person classes, also some online classes. So I was curious to Savannah and Jordan what y'all had to say about how you can be successful in each type of those classes. Okay, um, so for me, what was really important was adapting to each one of them like individually and recognizing like how each of them was different for me in terms of like work ethic, the course load, how I would be studying, how I would be communicating with like my peers because it to just treat them like the same it felt really strange for me and it I was using techniques that worked for one of them and they didn't work for the other 
so I really just I had to adapt to them as like individual like different courses and that helped a lot Okay, yeah, and then I can kind of start piggybacking off of what Savannah said. So honestly, my biggest takeaway from this past virtual year is that like genuineness and intentionality like really shines through the computer screen the same way that it would radiate in real life. If you're super engaged and intentional about learning, no matter if you're doing virtual or hybrid, it's going to shine through, showcasing that you're engaged and you want to learn. You'll find that you can still make authentic connections with your professors and your peers and still find academic access. When it's obvious that you're putting in real effort to capitalize on the opportunities that you're presented with, even through a Zoom screen, you will discover that you can really get a lot out of learning virtually, especially like, once again, if you're super engaged. Just remember to, um, in addition to having a good mindset, attend your office hours, whether you're in a hybrid or virtual environment, and use resources such as the Sanger Learning Center and your academic advisors to ensure academic success. Awesome, y'all. That was extremely informative. I feel like I can do super well in all three types of classes now. Um, but just to like, you know, expand on that question, I'm sure that a lot of us have advice on some study skills. So Angela, if you'll share and then I'll uh, piggyback off of you. Yeah, um, what's helped me with studying um, this past year is rewriting notes and lectures. This may seem really tedious and like a lot of work, but writing your notes down really helps with muscle memory and it helps you um, remember what you were writing and all the information that you learned in that, that day or that class. Um, I would also say if you are online, re-watching those lecture videos and watching um, your professors talk again can really help further understand the material. Um, I would also say study with friends, you know, four heads are better than one. So maybe meet some people in, that in those classes and um, study with them, it's really helpful. As well as um, utilizing professors and like TAs tools and um, like study guides that they give out. Um, they're coming directly from the professor or the TA. So you really wanna use those and look over those, um, especially if it's right before a test, you know, it'll be really helpful um, for you. And then another tool that I really like to use is Quizlet. Um, it really helps you learn the material, like I've been saying. Um, I don't know what kind of algorithm they use, but it really helps you um, like memorize all of the information that you put into that quiz. Yes, for sure, for sure. I feel like Angela and I are the exact same person because I was about to say the exact same things. Um, but Quizlet, for sure, I would reemphasize is a super, super helpful tool, um, especially because you don't have to use like physical flashcards, but it's all virtual and you can like do the study sets multiple times. Um, another thing y'all will find very common in a lot of your classes is creating group meets for the classes. So joining those is gonna be super, super important, especially because there's gonna be students, you know, providing a lot of helpful resources, self-study. Um, and in that way, you can also form study groups. So Angela was mentioning studying with your friends, especially studying with other students in that class is gonna be really, really helpful because Everyone has something else to bring to the table um, and to learn different perspectives. And then another thing I would recommend is getting in the habit of checking the syllabi of the class um, in Canvas, um, because that's where you're gonna find the most up-to-date information about you know, upcoming exams, what to expect on quizzes and things like that. Um, so being in the habit of checking is really important. Also just you know, to stay on top of your assignments and staying up-to-date with what the professor has planned for class will help you in the long run as well. Um, but to continue on, I know that we've been giving you all some advice on how to be successful in the classroom, but it's probably inevitable, inevitable with um, how, you know, with being at UT that it's gonna be a little bit of a struggle sometimes. So I'm wondering, Savannah and Marcos, who and where do y'all go to um, when you're struggling in your classes? Okay, so when I'm struggling with my classes, I like to go directly to the, to the source. I like to talk to my TAs, talk to my professors, go to office hours. I'm a big fan of office hours. I really struggled with chemistry my first semester, and um, I was in office hours every single week, every single time they held them, and I did great. I did a great job in the class, so, but I feel like if you, if you really want to, like, yes, it's a bit intimidating, but you know, your professors and your TAs are there to make that connection with you. They're there to help you. They want to see you succeed and they make the course. So they, 
they really are the best resource when it comes to like getting down and solving the issues that you have with like the course material or anything that you're struggling with. All right, now it's my turn, everyone. So I'll, I'm gonna say kind of the same thing as Savannah. So first off, I wanna like elaborate a little bit on like teaching assistant in office hours, just why I believe like, like those resources are very important. So the reason I think office hours are very important is because like if you have a question, like maybe you were struggling in a homework or maybe you took an exam and you just don't know why you got like a specific question wrong, you can ask them why and they'll like elaborate on it as well. And I think it also shows like intentionality as in like to the professors and the TA. So maybe you're like maybe one point away from getting an A, maybe they'll realize, oh, well, they were very intense on coming to my office hours. Maybe they'll round you up. I'm not saying they're going to do that. So don't quote me on that. But just so maybe it's like a, a, an incentive to go now. And also something I do when I'm struggling with my classes personally, I like going to my study group. So like people who are taking like similar classes with me, because it's just like a, a feeling of like being able to relate with someone as in like if I'm struggling with this class and someone is as well, it just makes you feel like you're not alone. And I think that's like very valuable. So I do, so when I'm struggling, like I go to my study groups and the last thing I do is like, I like to find people who are like succeeding in like the same classes as me. So maybe I can reach out to them and ask for help. But that's what I do when I struggle with my classes personally. Yeah, great advice. I can definitely say I've taken advantage of visiting my professors and TAs as well. And it really has helped me out. Um, but to switch it up a little bit, I know that this is a little bit more away from the classroom, but more with like another struggle. Um, you know, we choose our majors when we're coming in, but sometimes we're unsure. So if a student's feeling like they don't know if they belong within their major, Jordan and Marcus, what advice do y'all have for them? Alrighty, so first up, you are not like weird if you are thinking that you're not in the right place. It's really hard to come into college and immediately think that you know exactly what you want to do. And you'll come to realize if a major fits your personality through taking those specific classes. It's just one of the things that um, you can do initially would just to make sure that you have a good relationship with your academic advisor. They have so much experience and knowledge under their belt, and they've likely seen everything under the sun. So if you approach them with your concerns, even if like it's, oh, I want to like completely change schools, it's not going to be anything out of the ordinary for them. Also be sure to reach out at the Vic Center um, for Strategic Advising if any uncertainty persists, if you realize that you are completely in the wrong place. They will serve any student that is looking to just explore majors or careers. And they also provide like academic advising and career counseling. Also just like a general tip, don't be afraid to explore outside like your major specific classes. Honestly, some of the best classes that you'll take at UT will likely be electives, even if they're not necessarily directly correlating with what you're studying at the time being. Take advantage of those core curriculum classes like your visual and performing arts or your UGS to really like explore out of your comfort zone and maybe find like a new passion of yours. It could be come like a minor or a statistic or a double major. I don't know why I said statistic, I mean certificate. But yeah, just don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and reach out to the many resources here at UT. And just like to say what Jordan said in a, like in a similar way, I think it's very normal for people not to feel like they belong at their, with their majors. So I think it's called imposter. Yeah. See, I'm butchering it, but it's pretty much where you feel like, where you don't feel like you belong in whatever place you are. Imposter syndrome. It's imposter syndrome, everyone. So it's something like you're going to hear a lot here at UT Austin. So, and I think it's okay to feel like that, just like Jordan said. But I think you got to be very intentional. Like, if you don't belong, like, don't wait for something to come to you. I think you got to go out and look for something. So I know just being a business major, we have a resource called BBA Management Office, and that's where you can like to explore your careers and etc. And I'm not too sure. I'm pretty sure like very all the other colleges have something similar to this. So like, please, like, please, like try to explore and put yourself out there. I also think it's very beneficial realizing like you were here, you were like accepted here for a reason. Like I know here at UT, everyone's like the top of the top, like the cream of the crop, but like just realizing that, like, and then I like realizing it's also gonna be competitive and overwhelming, but like just reminding here, reminding yourself that you're here for a reason. That's what like I'd recommend just being like having that emotional intelligence to know like, okay, maybe I don't belong here, but like as long as you're intentional, and you're seeking ways. And I mean, that's all you can ask for, honestly. So now I'm gonna pass it back to Kirsten's part. 
Thank you, Marcus. Um, you really dropped some bars there when you said cream of the crop, top of the top. Um, but yeah, Jordan and Marcus, thank you all so much for your advice on that. Um, and of course, we're going to wrap it up soon. So our final question kind of addresses, you know, one of the biggest stressors in college, right? Midterms and exams. Um, but I don't want that to freak y'all out because Miss Angela <laughs> and Savannah are going to give y'all some great advice on how to study for those. Yes. Um, so similar to like what I was talking about earlier, about just like studying for classes, um, it's kind of the same, it's a little more intense. Um, so some tools that you can use, um, professors and TAs might come out with study guides um, to like use. Again, I would recommend using those because they should be pretty similar to the tests, but they might be pretty similar. Again, it's coming directly from your professors. So really use that because it, um, it's coming from the teacher of the class. Um, I would also say study previous tests and quizzes if possible. Um, some questions could be reused. Um, if they were a little bit tricky, the professor might want to reuse those questions. So really go and ask your professors to see if you could relook at those tests and see what you missed or see what you got wrong and all of that. Um, TAs will most likely hold um, reviews during office hours. So really go to those. Um, they are in direct contact with professors, so they'll know um, what they really need to like, talk about. They know all the material of the class that you covered throughout that semester. And then as well, let me try again. Um, study with friends as well. Um, that's going to be really important. They're in the same class as you and in the same boat. They're probably stressing as well. Um, so y'all can study together, you know, help each other out and all that good stuff. Um, for me, I felt like it was really helped me succeed when I studied over a longer period of time. Like Angela mentioned earlier in the video, like rewriting your notes after class, it seems tedious, but it's a form of studying that like it accumulates over time. Like over time, you're gonna be studying the notes that you took. And then when you actually get there to the exam, you're not doing so much cramming. You're not freaking out. You're not like absolutely terrified because you have to memorize so much information in like 12 hours before an exam so you can nail it. So just like spread it out over a long period of time so that you're studying in little increments so that you're not like having this terrible burden of stress when you actually do get to your exam. It just makes the whole process less terrifying, honestly. Yes, for sure, for sure. Um, Y'all had some great advice on how to study for some midterms and exams as well. Um, but that essentially wraps up our Q&A panel today. We thank y'all so much for joining us. Um, it's been great talking to y'all about how to be successful in the classroom. And we hope y'all take some of this into your own life and apply it um, when y'all come. We are so excited to welcome y'all to the 40 Acres in the fall. And yeah, welcome.